Alright guys, welcome to your 37th biology video and in this video what I want to do is basically continue where we left off in the last video and that's with step 3 and what molecule we had is isocitrate which is of course the 6 carbon isomer of citric acid now the first thing that it does in step number three is this isocitrate right here it actually gives one of its hydrogens to a molecule called NAD plus and this process forms a new molecule called NADH so this molecule is actually important later on for forming a bunch of ATPs so just take note that we have an NADH molecule formed in step number three so once the isocitrate is done donating one of its hydrogens in pretty much forming an NADH, then what it does is it isn't done yet. It actually releases a CO2 molecule. And of course, CO2 has a carbon in it. So now this molecule is no longer isocitrate because that's the molecule with six carbons. It is now a five carbon molecule. And it actually has a new name, and this is going to be a pain to spell. This new 5-carbon molecule is called alpha ketoglutarate. So now, just to repeat one last time, that in step number three, basically what happens is we start with isocitrate, which is an isomer of citric acid, and the first thing it does is it donates a hydrogen atom to NAD+, forming N. A D H which is very important later on and then after that a CO2 gets removed from it and it causes this isocitrate which was a six carbon molecule to become a five carbon molecule called alpha ketoglutarate which is a very long and annoying molecule to say so now let's go ahead and take this alpha alpha ketoglutarate I'm not even gonna say it anymore and let's go ahead and bring this to step number four so step Four, start with uh, someone sexting me alpha ketoglutarate and remember that this is a five carbon molecule so this is actually going to look pretty familiar because the first thing that it does is it donates a hydrogen to can you guess it yes another NAD plus and whenever this happens we end up with another NADH so actually this is pretty important to remember because in steps three and four we got an NADH and remember that every one of these molecules is actually going through the process twice so each of these steps actually generate two NADHs because remember in glycosis what happened is that glucose molecule split into two um, acids so now even though I'm showing this demonstration for one molecule this is actually two molecules per glucose. So now, after that's done, what happens is, let me go ahead and change my color. Again, this is going to look very repetitive, but it gives off a CO2. And remember, this is a four, or excuse me, this is a five carbon molecule right now. So what happens is we now have a four carbon molecule because we lost one carbon right here when it gave off CO2. So what this four carbon molecule is going to do is it's going to combine with the enzyme and I'll just write, actually I should write it up here. So once it's done giving off the CO2, it combines with the enzyme coenzyme A again. Look familiar? So whenever coenzyme A bonds with this four carbon molecule, it forms a new molecule and this new molecule is called succinyl COA. Much funner to say, succinyl COA. So basically the summary is in step number four, of the Krebs cycle it forms a CO2 and an NADH and also this molecule which is now a four carbon molecule combines with coenzyme A right here and the end product of step number four is succinyl CoA or CoA actually no one says CoA except me so now we can take this molecule right here and move on to step number five step five so step number five is of course succinyl coa that's what I'm gonna call it right now I don't care if it's wrong so basically what happens is a free-floating phosphate group so I'll just go ahead and write P right here 
it's going to go ahead and float around and it's going to trade places with that coenzyme A and it's going to bond with the succinyl. So remember, this is basically a molecule right here. Succinyl COA is a succinyl, which you know was our original molecule, and it bonded with an enzyme coenzyme A. Well now, this coenzyme A is going to switch places with this phosphate group right here. Now whenever this happens, we now have a molecule, well, don't worry about what it's called. What's important is that this phosphate that's now, now bonded with this succinyl instead of the coenzyme, it's going to get released from the molecule and it's going to combine with something called GDP. So now this phosphate gets released and this phosphate, I guess I'll draw it like that, it can buy, get combined, let me pick a new color, with a molecule called GDP. Now if you remember ADP meant it had two phosphates. GDP also has two phosphates. So when it combines with this phosphate that came from this molecule, it's going to turn into something called GTP. Now I know I didn't talk about GDP or GTP before, but the only thing that you have to remember is that GTP can actually be used to make ATP. ATP. And of course we know what ATP is, valuable, valuable energy in the cell. So just remember that in step number five, what happens is this coenzyme A that's bonded with succinyl gets lost and instead it combines with a phosphate and whenever the phosphate gets lost, it combines with the GDP to form GTP, which means three phosphates, and this GTP can be used to form ATP, which is of course energy for the cells. <laughs> I just said pee like 18 times and now I have to go pee. So I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching and hopefully in the next video we can finish up step 6 through 8 which is the Krebs cycle. So again, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.